Hey Celsiologists, welcome back to my channel. So what we're going to do today, it's a Saturday today, we're going to do something fun. Um, we are going out to eat breakfast. We're not cooking breakfast at home today because we've got people inspecting the apartment. So we need to go very soon. We're going to take our laptop to a brunch place and then we're going to go to Parliament House today and do a tour and get some souvenirs for my family. So you may recall that I went to old Parliament House last vlog. We are going to the actual Parliament House this time. So the one where all the politicians gather, like for sitting weeks. We're going to that one, uh, which and it's a new experience for both of us because I've never been before. You'd think that I've been here for nearly three years. I would have gone. Um, I haven't yet, so we'll see. Anyway, I think with the job front as well, this is the first time I've experienced, I guess, a little bit of imposter syndrome um, in a very, very long time. I haven't felt imposter syndrome in years. I think once you have been in the industry for a while and develop your skills and develop your knowledge and build your inner confidence in yourself professionally, the imposter syndrome doesn't peek its ugly head around a lot as much anymore. I promise. When it's when you're at the junior levels, it, it comes out a bit more because you're new. You're new to the field. You're new to the job environment. You're new to the corporate environment, maybe. Um, you're new to the actual job that you're doing and the company or the organization. You're new to working with specific type of people. Um, and, you know, different industries have different cultures as well, which fuels imposter syndrome a lot. Um, I know in academia, academia is, can be known to be a very toxic work environment. I don't want to say that because I don't want to deter people from that. And I actually had a decent experience, but it's the industry in itself and the way it, the culture is of the academic world that tends to fuel a lot of imposter syndrome a lot for women. But I'll, again, I can talk about that in a separate video if you like. I was just kind of chilling, you know. Uh, when you're at that level, be like below the leadership level, you're still sort of in your what I call your chilling phase. You're still working at a senior level. So you might manage people below you or you might have more of a responsibility. But you're still building yourself technically. You're still doing a technical role. Um, you're building your skills, your knowledge, etc. And usually once you build that up for a couple of years, that's when you go into the management level. But for my case, that's not what happened. Um, I've only been like a senior technical person, um, I guess technical officer for about a year, which is actually not a lot of time. Usually you get about, you know, a minimum of two to three years before you even start managing uh, an area. So you always have to just kind of go in and take the opportunity and just my, my rule with opportunities is say yes, stress later. That's my rule with any type of really good opportunity. It's very easy to overthink opportunities sometimes and worry like, am I good enough? Is this for me? Well, you won't know unless you say yes. So just say yes and then stress later. I'm aware that when I did like a poll a few months ago on YouTube, asking my subscribers what kind of videos they wanted. I am very aware that people were asking for a video about imposter syndrome. I haven't forgotten about it. It's on my to-do list. I just want to make sure I do that topic justice. Uh, like I said, I haven't felt it in a long time. So I really need to go back and reminisce on my very early academic days to remember like what I used to do and how I used to cope and handle it and kind of understand it a bit more now that I'm in a I can look at it from a different perspective because I'm in a different career um so yeah that's it's it's coming I just want to make sure that I do the topic justice because um it's something that every woman will feel at some point in their career you don't have to be a woman to be feeling imposter syndrome I'm telling you now and I want you to remember this when I say this it doesn't matter what level someone is in the industry. They could be the graduate or the CEO. It doesn't matter. 
everybody feels imposter syndrome at some point no matter what level they're at and one thing that i've learned from working with really powerful people powerful women powerful men influential people wealthy people is that they feel it they feel the imposter syndrome sometimes sometimes they feel it more than you realize i think the difference is at that level they're better at hiding it i'll do a video about that i promise i just um yeah need to get my need to get my world less chaotic first on on that topic for that imposter syndrome video that you'd like me to make if there's anything specific about that topic that you would like me to talk about in that video let me know in the comments below um I'm, otherwise i'll just keep it general and have an overview of it like what it is why we feel it what could trigger it what we can do about it that sort of stuff all right let's go i am starving now Hello, happy Sunday. I went out to run some errands. I got my nails done and it took way too long, longer than what I thought. So I'm so glad to be home because I have so many things to do today, including wrapping my stepdad's present so that I can ship it tomorrow. And that also reminded me while I was getting gift wrapped today that I haven't shown you guys what I bought from the parliament shop when I went yesterday. So let's do a haul and show you guys what I got. I went a bit ham at this gift store, so bear with me. There's a lot of items in here. So the first thing I got was some loose leaf tea. This is organic peppermint and round leaf mint bush tea. And it's called Parliament. So I thought that was cool. We got some Murray River salted caramel chocolate and this is called Federation chocolate. It was handcrafted in Tasmania. I've had Tasmanian chocolate before handmade in Tasmania when I used, when I traveled there and the chocolate is just so good. I don't know why it just is. So yeah, thought that was another cool present. I got these. I don't know if you can see them. I'll show you. They're called parlor mints. So they are basically breath mints, but 
their parliaments. Parliament House is very known for these. There was like a green version and a pink one, probably the same flavor, but I just got a whole bunch of green ones to give to friends and family. Very cool. Now this next item I have been looking for everywhere and I finally found it yesterday, but it was a miracle that I found it because I got the last one. It is the Smith and Evans coffee beans that they serve to the politicians in Parliament House. Now, you can get bags of these at the Parliament Cafe upstairs on the second floor of um, Parliament House. But when I got there and I asked about it, there was only one bag left. So I bought the bag. I was meant to buy two. One for my stepdad, one for my brother because they both really love coffee. But yeah, this is the beans that they serve to politicians. I also got some postcards just for the presents. And that's going to go in each gift that I'm going to give to people when I go back. Now in this bag, it's my favorite. At Parliament House, you can get more lapel pins, but they are lapel pins of the different flags. I'll show you. So they had a whole bunch of different um, pins that you could purchase. They were like $15 each. And it features the Australian flag on one side and then another country's flag next to it. So nearly every country was there. But of course, we have to get the Australian one with the Filipino flag next to it. So one is mine to wear for work. And the other one is for my stepdad because obviously he's from the Philippines. So I thought that was really cute. And yeah, let's get the other gifts that I've bought and let's put it all together and yeah let's start packing them all It's Monday today and as you can see I am dressed to go to work I don't usually work in the office on a Monday but I thought I'd come in a couple of extra days while I'm temporarily um, promoted just in case the rest of the team needs me they won't they're fully functional and capable without me but you know just for that moral support I guess um, before we do that, let's go to the post office because we need to ship my stepdad's presents and then yeah. into my office it's literally a rug on the floor with my laptop on a bin <laughs> and I'm watching oh hang on be quiet for a second anyway I'm sitting in front of the TV at the moment while I edit some videos I'm pumping out as much YouTube videos as possible or at least editing them so that they're all on my channel scheduled to post weekly because this weekend, next weekend, we need to deal with this drama. We need to sort through all of these, get rid of anything we don't want. And yeah, we need to sort out the kitchen. The fridge is getting taken this weekend as well. I literally have to clean out everything in this fridge 
there isn't much in there. But. Clean all of this out, cook everything today and tomorrow, and then put it in my work fridge <laughs> for a week. Um, yeah, we'll sort that out. Yeah, I'm just watching the most recent video that I just uploaded just to check the quality as I usually do. And while I'm doing that, I'm making the second and third part of the series for that series. I finally put up the video where I go through a jewelry tour of all my pieces and talk a little bit about the brand's values and everything behind the design process. The series is literally called Behind the Design because I talk about all, you know, all the different things about the, the jewelry and the packaging. I'm trying to edit everything as fast as I can. I use after work to do that and pump them out. And then I have the weekends to pack. That's what I'm trying to do. I love this show so much. Does anyone else like this show? It's called Thank God You're Here. It's my favorite. I don't watch TV normally, like normal Australian channels, but I will watch normal TV for this show while I'm editing. I love it, it's so funny. Good morning. We need to give you guys an update because we haven't really been doing much filming recently now that we're getting very close to moving. I'm gonna sneeze, one second. <coughs> nah give you guys an update because I'm not filming as much throughout the week anymore because of how busy we are and just how close we're getting to moving so overall from the moving perspective it is my second last weekend here in Canberra this weekend in particular is my last quiet one I guess where I'm just literally preparing to just pack everything and, and go. I know I say that every week, but this is the last week because next week and we do have a bit of time here and there, but that's when we start saying our goodbyes to people and we've got like our going away events and everything, dinners, catch ups. So that, that weekend will be a little bit chaotic. Um, and then after that weekend, we've only got a few days in Canberra where I'll work in the office, work from home, and we leave. Now, you would think that having all my furniture gone in the apartment and the fact that I'm just sleeping on a mattress right now <laughs> would make the move a little bit more real. And it did for like five minutes, but I think today when the fridge goes that's what's going to make it real because it's going to get real ghetto up in here where I won't have a fridge to keep food or my milk or ice or anything like that to make coffees. So I'm going to be really feeling it th this week. But I did have the option for the fridge to go next week, like a few days before I left. But to be honest, I just wanted the thing gone. Like that's how ready I am to move. I just want all of my stuff to be taken as fast as possible so I don't have to deal with it. Low key, I'm loving it because that means we have an excuse to just eat takeaway for the next one and a half weeks. I couldn't think of anything better. I really don't like to cook. I cook for survival. So the fact that we have to get takeaway now or kind of like do daily grocery shops here and there or like you utilize my works fridge and store some stuff there that's fine with me i i really like takeaway food so yay we managed to fix our car so she's got brand new wheels she got brand new tires she got brand new battery she ain't gonna die in the eight hour drive we're very excited for that um yeah she it's kind of like she got a little heart transplant so yeah she's she's uh she's living her best life now she feels so different when she she gets driven she feels really um not deflated <laughs> like so i can tell the difference so yeah i'm, I'm very excited because we took her to get fixed yesterday and i'm just so happy i don't have to worry about the tires or the battery for the next couple of years so tick
So with the money that we got from selling everything, that added up to about $1,500 or something like that. We actually made a little bit of a profit, <laughs> which is not normal when you move. You usually lose a lot of money when you move. So we're proud of that. But some of that did go to the car though, but that's okay because you know the car needs to get us home. So that's cool. An update about work. I'm still in my managerial role and it's, I just completed day eight out of 10. Um, so I'm, I'm really glad that things haven't been too crazy, but I just got asked halfway through the week by my boss to continue on, um, with the temporary position for another two weeks on top of that. So well, technically it's not two weeks, like a week and a half. Basically, I'm in this position right up until the day that I move because the day that we move, the day I'm driving, I've taken some time off to, to prepare for that move. So right up until that week, that day, uh, I'll still be in this position. So yeah, that was a that was very interesting. I had this mindset that after day 10, I'd go back to my normal role. I'll just be chilling, like just doing whatever. No, we are continuing this role right up until the move. Now, throughout the last couple of months, ever since people found out that I was moving, I have been asked how I feel about it. Like, how am I feeling right now at this point in time about this move? And my answer to people is, and my answer to this question is that I am very ready to start the next chapter of, of this journey. You know, I think in the beginning, when I first made the decision, I was a little bit sad because, you know, you're, you're about to mourn a chapter in your life that you've been so used to for the last couple of years. And considering, you know, all the, the effort and time that I put in to build a life here in Canberra, you know, that's definitely something I'm going to be sad about. But as we get closer to the move, I am more and more certain that I made the right decision. It's not because I don't love Canberra. I love Canberra. I can, I thought that I would shut that idea down where I won't move here anymore or come here anymore but the reality is as part of my work I have to frequently fly in every couple of months for work purposes so it's not a complete loss I still get to see the people that I care about um, the chapter is never really fully closed um, and yeah you just never know what's going to happen in the horizon so I really need to remember not to think like that you know because you just never know you can't predict the future but it's exciting at the same time, not knowing what's gonna happen. And since I've come to Canberra and stayed here for the last two and, a, two and a bit years, it's nearly three years, not quite. We have accomplished everything we needed to accomplish here. We have done everything that we needed to do here. I achieved a career goal of mine from starting as a grad and working my way up in the corporate ladder, um, jumping like, you know, four or five levels in the, in the last two and a half years to the managerial role that I am now. This role that I'm in right now was the goal from the very beginning that I wanted to achieve. It was the equivalent level of what I was as a lecturer before. We've ticked that box now. So it's time to come home. But as we get closer to moving each and every day, I become more and more certain that I've made the right decision. And now that we are in a more stable place in our lives, probably the most stable we've been in a very long time. I'm a bit of a nomad. I like to move around a lot. I don't like to stay in the one place for too long, but at this point in our lives, we now can prioritize other more important things and make room for our, in our lives for those sort of things. Um, so that's what this next chapter back home is going to really be about. I'm very excited. I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm just sensing something's, something's happening over there um, or something new is going to happen. I don't know, but I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. That's what my intuition is telling me anyway. Maybe it's denial. Like, I don't know. 
<laughs> Maybe it's gas. I don't know. But something's something's brewing over there and I want to be a part of it. So after I came back from work last night, I was even though I was really tired, I remembered I had to clean out the fridge today, so it's empty. It's immaculate, it's clean, you can eat off the shelves. She's ready to go. She's still plugged in just because I wanted my colleague to see the fridge in its proper condition first before they take it. Um, there's nothing wrong with this fridge, so if anything goes wrong, it's got nothing to do with me, mate. But yeah, he'll be coming in about an hour or two. And once the fridge is gone, we can then go out, have brunch. Um, I use brunch on a weekend now to sit there and edit my YouTube videos. I need to utilize my time a bit more effectively. So eating out is my excuse for editing videos. Like I just try and do all of that all together. Um, I've got one that I need to finalize and it will probably be published, you know, today or tomorrow, but it still needs one, one look through before I do that. So that's what I'll do today. We also need to buy bubble wrap and stuff to start wrapping all our fragile items like my Hollywood mirror, my TV, my telescope, like we're, we're really going to be doing a lot of work this weekend. Thank you for watching this video. I'm going to keep it short, sharp and sweet. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Please comment below if you have any questions. Give our video a bit of a like. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And, you know, if you're not doing anything today, what, like, my, I've got a lot of vlogs now. This is like vlog number what? 11, 12? I don't know. We've got a few vlogs in our uh, channel now. So, you know, if you're not doing anything, why don't you just kick back and watch it from the very beginning? Like, go from episode one all the way up to this one so you can be up to date on the gossip. That's just me anyway. Otherwise, see ya. Bye. Oh, and another thing I forgot to tell you guys is that someone has rented out my apartment now. So we don't have to deal with inspections anymore. Yay. Let's show you my fridge. Bye-bye, fridge. Bye, fridge. You've served me so well.